new bill in Massachusetts targeting guns and specifically law-abiding gun owners is so egregious and apparently unconstitutional that Massachusetts police agencies have come out opposed to this bill. It's that bad. One year after the Supreme Court struck down the concealed carry law in Massachusetts, Representative Michael Day introduced House Bill 4420, an act modernizing firearm laws. There can be no dispute that gun violence is on the rise, certainly around the country, but even here in Massachusetts where we have great laws. The bill rewrites licensing procedures, revamps regulations for training and selling firearms, and expands extreme risk protection orders, also known as red flag laws. It also cracks down on ghost guns. This is really intending to get at uh, those that are evading our, our code of laws through the advancement of technology um, and criminal behavior. It's so overwhelming, no lawful citizen would be able to comply if this passes, nobody. These laws are more convoluted. They didn't streamline the process like they said they were going to do. Okay, the bill is HD 4420, HD 4420 in Massachusetts. And this thing, even the cops are saying it does nothing to stop violent crime. All it does is get in the way of law-abiding citizens owning guns. And there are so many terrible provisions in this bill, something like 60 different sections. It is, it is the worst bill that we've seen in a long time. And we're imploring you to, if you live in Massachusetts, be opposed to this bill. And if you don't live in Massachusetts, don't think it's not going to impact you because anti-gun lawmakers all over the country are watching this thing and they're going to try to copy it. This bill already has the support of House Speaker Ron Mariano. Mariano said in a statement, quote, it is my hope that the work we do here will not only make Massachusetts a safer place to live, but will serve as a national model for Congress and other states. The first thing I want to talk about, because it applies to what we do here at the USCCA, is the concept of firearms training in order to get your license in Massachusetts. And the law states that now there has to be a new written test and you have to take it and you have to pass it, but they don't know what the content will be. That hasn't been laid out there. They haven't decided if it's got to be a four hour class or an eight hour class or a hundred question test or anything like that. Um, it does have to talk about injury prevention and harm reduction and, and different things like that. Those all sound pretty good. Um, there is an element of this test, which has to cover active shooter response for the private citizen even though the law as it written states that most private citizens, even with their concealed carry permit, can't carry their guns in places where there are likely to be an active shooter situation like schools, churches, malls, different places like that. So it's really kind of weird. Sorry to interrupt, I'm pausing the video right now to let you know that we have a free giveaway going on right now. Super secret, I can't even tell you about it. It's happening right now, but it ends really soon. So all you gotta do is click the link in the description down below to find out what it is you could win. Okay, now back to the video. It has to have live firearms training. They're gonna require that, but they don't know what or how or where or anything like that. The Criminal Justice Information Service will issue your training certificate instead of individual instructors issuing that training certificate. So now we're expanding the bureaucracy. The government has control of your training certificate and whether or not you have completed everything and making sure that that's happening. So they're just expanding that. And here, I wanna read this right, right from a summary of the bill. No such certified training courses currently exist to meet any of these standards. Such a course, if it did exist, would likely take up to a week to complete at the cost of thousands of dollars. Now this is the response from people who have been looking over this bill from law enforcement officers and other folks who are talking about this right now. So other things, section 57 of the bill is one that is really wide ranging and, and stop and think for a minute, section 57. How far down did they bury this stuff before it, it's all hidden in there? So. Um, first of all, it makes it okay for persons to voluntarily surrender their firearms. This is a new definition and ammunition 
to a licensing authority. So they're asking people to voluntarily turn in their guns. Do you think criminals are going to do that? I don't think so. So um, here's one that I kind of like. Professional photographers and writers are exempt from the long gun permits during the course of their work. Now, is there something in the state laws of Massachusetts that define a professional writer and or photographer who says that they're in the course of their work carrying a long gun, whether it be hunting or shooting or competition or anything like that? So it really seems kind of odd that they put that in there. Now, here's the big one that it appears to me that the people who drafted this law are just trying to stop business in firearms in Massachusetts. And understand, there are some tremendously big firearms makers headquartered in Massachusetts. Common carrier employees would have to possess a license to carry a concealed carry permit in the Commonwealth in order to transport firearms, feeding devices, that's magazines, barrels, frames, receivers, and ammunition. So what that means is anybody working at UPS or FedEx or DHL or any other common carrier system, any common carrier company, would be required to get a concealed carry permit. Remember all this egregious list of how that permit has to be put together, all of those tests and all of that time? They have to have a permit before they can even touch or transport any of those guns or gun parts. Now, they very specifically say in this law that not just the action of the gun, that's, that's what the ATF defines as a firearm, is, is just the action, the, the serialized part of the gun. Now Massachusetts wants the receiver, the action of the gun, and the barrel of the gun, and all the magazines that can be used in the gun to all have individual serial numbers. But it gets worse. They say that only the state can apply those serial numbers. So are they going to create this machine shop somewhere in the state where you have to send your guns and gun parts to get them serialized, recorded, and shipped back to you in, in the state of Massachusetts? This, this is really, really far reaching. And to understand how far this is creeping out into the world of, of law-abiding gun owners, this criminals aren't gonna do this. They're not, not gonna have anything to do with this. This is just barriers to entry, making it more difficult for law-abiding gun owners to own guns and specifically carry them. The new law also increases the penalties for failure to report in a timely manner the loss or theft of your firearm. Again, this is just making it more and more difficult for law-abiding citizens dealing with their guns. Um, you know, bad guys are not going to call the cops and say somebody stole my gun or I, I lost my gun after a robbery or something like that. Another really big one that people are talking about is that a law enforcement officer can at any time in Massachusetts demand to see your permit. So a license holder, whether or not you have a gun on you or whether or not you even own a gun, if you have a license and that's probably going to be tied to your driver's license or whatever, a law enforcement officer can demand to see your permit at any time. This is basically stop and frisk for the Second Amendment community. So the, the cops can just say, hey, let me see your, your concealed carry permit. I want to see it right now. If you don't immediately provide that permit, the penalty for that can include up to the loss of your permit and the revocation of your firearms rights in the state of Massachusetts. So this kind of stuff, again, bad guys don't have permits. So who is this going to apply against? just law-abiding gun owners, the people who are jumping through all of these other hoops, these as yet to be named training courses and all that other stuff that people have to do to get their permits. Now the cops can just walk up, no probable cause, nothing like that, and just say, hey, let me see your permit. I wanna see that right now. And if you don't provide it, you're in trouble. One of the other things that people are really interested in is the law makes it illegal to carry your gun just about anywhere, just about anywhere, unless that location is specifically posted or specifically labeled as allowing firearms to be carried there. It makes the blanket statement is that it's illegal everywhere unless specifically allowed. Now think about this. What happens to hunters who own hunting property? Do they have to post their own property? as being allowed for people to carry guns on their property before they can get out there to hunt. If you are carrying your gun legally 
and you step onto someone else's property and you haven't been given express permission or that property is not posted, now you're in violation of the law and you're in trouble. This idea is to curtail, extremely curtail, the locations where honest law-abiding citizens can carry their firearms legally. Think about what that does for the criminals. This is gonna be a field day for criminals because they know now that people who have gone through all the hoops to get their permit, they're probably not gonna be carrying their gun because they can get in trouble if they carry it in the wrong place. This kind of stuff only makes things easier for the criminals and more difficult for the law-abiding citizens. As I said, the law also addresses delinquent children. If a child, if someone under 18 is judged delinquent by the courts, that person becomes prohibited from owning a firearm for life in the state of Massachusetts, forever. So yeah, there are some pretty bad teenage kids out there, but now if they're taking folks juvenile record and applying that for life, they no longer get to possess a gun. I think that's kind of overreaching and maybe kids did something stupid when they were younger and they've reformed and gotten better. So this kind of stuff just makes this law so egregious that it's not supported by anybody who has any working knowledge of the firearms industry community. Good, honest, law-abiding gun owners are looking at this thing going, wow, what next? If this passes across the board, problems. Problems with licensing authorities. Who's gonna do the licensing? Now, um, they have local authorities who check on gun sellers in Massachusetts. They're going to centralize this to the state police and they're going to write all new rules about how the state police have to visit gun shops at least once a year and determine whether or not the gun shops are keeping the proper records in accordance with all the other laws, things like that. This is, it is a blanket law that is just terrible for everybody involved. And I'm urging you, anybody in Massachusetts, Get in touch with a state lawmaker, tell them to oppose this law. And if you're not in Massachusetts, don't think that you're not involved in this. This is the kind of stuff that spreads. It's insidious. It just spreads across the country. People see this, anti-gunners see this, and they're like, oh, maybe we can do something similar to what happened over there in Massachusetts. I'm sure this kind of stuff, if it gets passed, is going to go through the court system. But how long does it take to get something to the Supreme Court? This is gonna be years. This fight is going on for years. And I mentioned the Supreme Court, all of those great Supreme Court cases that were pro-gun cases recently, that doesn't mean our fight's over. That means it has just begun because these anti-gun politicians are now trying to find ways around those Supreme Court rulings to see if they can make it even more difficult for law-abiding citizens to own guns. Okay, congratulations for making it all the way to the end of the video. Now we got a special challenge for you. Guess how many bullets are left in this box? I took a few out. It was originally a box of 20. If we get 6,000 likes on this video. We're going to pick one person at random with the right answer and post them up on one of the upcoming videos. So click like and you know what? Share this video all over the place and guess how many bullets I left in this box. Before you go, you just missed one of our best videos that got over a half a million views. Click right here to watch it now.